seven batters. Yes, he did. But he only gave up two hits. Okay. The Cubs hit into three double plays. Wainwright struck out eight. And at a key spot in the eighth inning with men on base, and he's thrown over 115 pitches, he's facing Chris Bryant, the stud man of the Cubs, okay? And he strikes him out swinging. Wow. What a gutsy effort by Adam Wainwright and the Cardinals. And as we look at the standings this morning, it's not the Cardinals. It's not the Cubs. It's the Milwaukee Brewers. The Milwaukee Brewers sitting atop the National League Central at 34-26. and Winners of two in a row. They beat Pittsburgh yesterday 4-2. to two. They are home tomorrow for a three-game set against the Miami Marlins, who we're going to talk about in just a moment. The Cubs are in second place now. They've lost three in a row. They've only won two of their last ten games. They're 31-26, and 26, a game and a half behind the Brewers. The Cardinals three games out, winners of four in a row with that sweep over the Cubs. The Pirates only five games out, and here again sits Cincinnati, six and a half games out in last place. Run differential in the National League Central, guys. And I'm looking at home away splits as well. But the Brewers only have a plus 18, which tells me they are, by run differential, just a little bit better than 500. Well, that's what their record shows, 34-26. and 26. They're 18-11 and 11 at Miller Park, and they're 16-15 and 15 away from home. Okay, They're the only team in the division as of right now with a winning record, both on the road and at home. Hence, they're in first place this morning as we look at the standings. The Cubs. 31 and 26, a run differential that leads the division plus 46. They're 18 and 10 at home, but they're only 13 and 16 on the road. And of course, they just got swept in St. Louis by the Redbirds. The Cardinals, 30 and 28, they've won four in a row. Run differential plus 19, very close to the Brewers' run differential. 19 and 12 at home, the most wins in the division at home so far but the least amount of wins on the road in the division. They're 11 and 16, and they're home tomorrow to the Red Legs of Cincinnati. Pittsburgh, a minus 68 run differential. So Pittsburgh seems to be doing it with smoke and mirrors. And I heard Lenny say this morning on his show, and if you didn't hear it, go back and listen on demand on this network, Lenny Melnick, FantasySports.com. Lenny said, if you have Josh Bell, it may be time to trade him. Josh Bell's had a great year, no doubt. But I'm one of these guys, I look at recent stats, and you know that. What have they done in the last 10 games? Bell struck out a lot this weekend. And so if you are looking to trade, you're still trading high, and that's what fantasy sports is about. Get the most for what you can get for him. Now may be a great time, and I agree with Lenny, to trade Josh Bell. The Pirates seem to be doing it with smoke and mirrors. A minus 68 run differential. I could see the Pirates finishing in last place in that division this year. I think they will. When all's said and done. Their home record, well, they're the only team in the division with a losing home record. They're 11 and 17 at home, 17 and 13 on the road, and now they're home beginning tomorrow against the Braves, who are hot at this point. Okay. Cincinnati 27 and 32, six and a half games out, a plus 36 run differential, which means I see the Reds jumping over that 500 mark. They're 15 and 15 at home, 12 and 17 on the road, and they're at St. Louis beginning tomorrow. So you've got a three team, th- you know, two rather, uh, inner division games coming up, three game series is uh, starting tomorrow. Keep your eye on that. Let's move on to the National League East, where the Phillies, in spite of themselves, continue to lead the division. The Phillies are 33 and 26, they have a one game lead over the Braves. They had the privilege or horror <laughs> of uh, traveling to Chavez Ravine this weekend to play the Dodgers in L.A., where the Dodgers promptly and efficiently stomped, stomped the fighting fields. So what do they do? They stay on the road trip. They're still on the West Coast playing the Padres today. 
They send their ace out, Aaron Nola. they got to have some relief. But in spite of themselves, they still lead the National League East this morning by one game over the Braves. Only two teams in the division have a positive run differential. Those are those two, Philadelphia and Atlanta. The Phillies have a plus 21 road differential. They're 20 and 11 at home, almost playing, winning two thirds of their games at home, 13 and 15 on the road. The Braves, however, 32 and 27, one game out. They've won two in a row. They won at home against the Tigers yesterday. We heard a clip from Kristen Stewart's home run. In spite of that, the Braves still won seven to four. They are at Pittsburgh starting tomorrow. They are 16 and 15 at home. They are 16 and 12 away. So they have the same number of wins on the road and at home, and a better percentage actually away from Atlanta. So we'll see how the Braves perform in Pittsburgh. I think the Braves will perform well. Uh, and if we look at the rest of that division, not counting these teams out because the Mets are very talented. They just seem to be a disgruntled group, you know, a little malcontent, whatever. 28-31, and 31, they're five games out. They lost Arizona in the desert yesterday. They do come home tomorrow to play the Giants, so it's time to make some hay. The Giants come into town. The Nationals, boy, did Scherzer not pitch a great game yesterday. 15 strikeouts. The manager came out in the eighth inning and Scherzer said, go back to the dugout. I think Scherzer's tired of the bullpen <laughs> blowing his winds, right? So they he stays in the game, finishes the inning. They they win the game yesterday against the Reds, 4-1. to one. Scherzer with 15 strikeouts. What a presence on the mound. They're seven games out. They've won, of their last 10, seven wins. They've won two in a row. I don't count the Nationals out. They're only seven games behind the Phillies. I still think that's a four-team race. But another team in that division who they played some good ball lately, the Miami Marlins. You know, Lenny talked about Mr. Ramirez, who's over 63 at bats, hitting like 360. But they got another player on their team. How about Cooper? Cooper, you know, I was looking at Twitter and I texted Lenny this morning. You guys know Lenny and Craig Mish are great friends. I'd love to meet Craig Mish. I think he's just a real interesting guy. I'd love to have a conversation with him. Maybe I'll get that chance one day. But at any rate, I uh, asked Lenny to, to see if he could get up with Craig Mish. Tell me about Cooper. And the response I get from Lenny is, Cooper's for real. So I had him on my team. We'll take a flyer on him. I needed a backup outfielder. He's not going to take the place of a Trout or a Zaria or anybody like that, but he's sort of in that same category as I put Kristen Stewart, right? Uh, if you need to fill in or somebody to add a backup bat, he's not. You could do worse. Uh, he's been hot lately, and so I've added him to my team. Make of that what you want to. I don't tell people what to do, but talking about the Braves, just one more minute. How about Dansby Swanson? The 25-year-old, if you remember the story on Dansby Swanson, let me give it to you if you don't, okay? Number one pick in the draft, 2016, out of Vanderbilt, okay? Drafted by the Diamondbacks. Remember Shelby Miller, the once Atlanta Brave great, who became a not-so-great in Arizona, okay? Trade. Swanson comes over to Atlanta. I saw him play at high A ball two years ago. The same year he played in high A ball, the same season later in the year he made the major leagues. Okay, And, you know, he's sort of been scuffling. He's hot a little while, cold a little while. Well, he's been hot this season. The 25-year-old has had a power surge. Uh, I mean, really, the power, the bolts, are, or the lightning is, is flashing with Dansby Swanson so far. He had only 14 home runs all of last year, but he already has 12 in only 59 games this year. He's got a 495 slug percentage. He's hitting 264. Check this out. 
41 RBIs. Yeah, you heard me right. 41 RBIs. 31 runs scored, 5 steals. Yesterday went 2 for 3 with a double home run, 3 RBIs, 2 runs scored, and a walk as the Braves beat the Tigers. So the Braves have quite the player there in young Dansby Swanson, and that will sort of lead us into our next segment. I want to talk about some players to watch. We've been watching. We may have. And then our final segment is going to be looking at the games coming up this week and players that you may want to consider picking up. Okay. How about Eric Thames for Milwaukee? He's going to be the first one to talk about this morning. You know, Thames is outfield first base eligible. He's hitting 254 on the season with seven home runs and 24 RBIs. Milwaukee's home this week. And over his last four starts, one for two, one for four with a homer, one for two, two for three yesterday with a homer, three RBIs, and two runs scored. It appears that there is a real timeshare in Milwaukee, and Thames has the strong side of that split, being that he's the left-handed bat. And so I just say with that team and the power they have and they exude, I think Eric Thames is certainly a player to keep your eye on in fantasy. We've already talked about the Detroit Tiger trio. We've already talked about Dansby Swanson. So let's move on to, how about Michael Chavez? Now, I think the jury's still out on Chavez. I have a good friend, (coughs) Phil Chappie, (coughs) and Chappie loves Chavez. And I had him on my team. Notice I said had. What I've noticed about Chavez, he has a, and I agree with you, Donkey Oki, it may be a good time to sell high on Swanson, but so far, he has just really been a terror for the Braves. But if you could sell high on a Dansby Swanson, could you get a Xander Bogarts for Dansby Swanson? Are you in a league where you're playing with some Braves fans and a guy has Xander Bogarts? Boy, that'd be a great coup of a trade. Can you imagine pulling that one off? Hey, you never know, unless you try. Um, but Chavez is having a hard time lately with the high fastball in the zone thrown with plus 95 speed. Now, maybe a lot of players do that. But he has a hard time either laying off of it or being behind it. He was scuffling at the plate. He was 0 for 11, excuse me, 1 for 15 coming into the game last night against the Yankees. He went 2 for 4. But those two hits are, let me talk about them. The first hit he had was on an off-speed pitch off left-hander C.C. Sabathia that was up in the zone and flat as a rock. And he hits the ball into left field for a single. Then later in the game, he hits a bloop fly ball towards Clint Frazier. Well, we know the trouble Frazier has in the outfield. And the ball lands and has some kind of funky spin. And, of course, it goes by Clint Frazier. And, of course, Chavez gets a triple. But it's not your conventional triple, guys. It's not the ball that hits the gap and rolls to the wall. It's the pop-up that goes about 150 feet. And it's just fortuitous for him that Clint Frazier is playing right field. I've got some concerns about him. I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm not saying it's time to cut bait on him. But keep your eye on him. If I could trade Dansby Swanson for Michael Chavez and get Dansby Swanson in that deal, I'm all over it. I'm all over it right now. So, Donkey Oki, you have any ideas about these trades? You let me know. And and come on, Chappie, don't be booing me. I'm just trying to give you some good information this morning that you can take as you're in your work day and think about it and prepare for your show on Tuesday night, right? Okay, more players to talk about. Have you guys been noticing David Fletcher for the Angels? Wow. And look at this. He's second base eligible. He's third base eligible. He's shortstop eligible. He's outfield eligible. I wish he'd catch a few games, don't you? David Fletcher has hit safely in each of his last 12 games and in 24 of his last 26. He has 13 multi-hit games in his 26 games, bringing his season average up to 323 with a 463 slug. Four home runs, five stolen bases, and here's what's important, I think, because you know he's seeing the ball well. More walks, 18, 
than he has strikeouts 13 in those 26 games. Okay?